Before the video starts, about 96% of you guys are not subscribed. Subscribing and clicking that notification bell does help me out and a lot in doing what I really want to do. Thank you guys so much for all the support. What is going on guys? Rogue TCG here, here with another Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG deck profile. This is going to be the updated version of my Orcist Cartesia deck. Uh, I brought it to locals last week, saw a lot of Fire King, saw a lot of Fire decks in general. Uh, and I made some modifications to the deck to more appropriately um, contest in this metagame. So this is what this deck is primarily going to be, a deck that can contest in the Fire metagame. And is specifically built to play against those decks. Uh, that's not the app though. Let's get to the profile. Alrighty, starting out the main deck, we are starting out with... Triple Gear Suit the Orcist Mech Knight on normal or special. It'll send an Orcist from deck to grave or a world legacy. And if it's the only monster I have on my field, I can make a token for both players, level one, so we can make the Grebo into it. And it can be a one card full combo. So we are playing three of it as a normal summon full combo. Next, we are on double Orcus Nightmare. We do want to keep the Orcus count a little bit high because we are on the Cartesia engine. We are playing one additional Orcus comparative to last time, so that is a little bit of an upgrade. Draw on two Nightmare. This can send any Orcus from deck to grave, or any Dark Machine, rather. I apologize. But it is also able to activate in the damage step if you have Babel up, and it can boost attack of uh, monsters. So, very um, situationally relevant. Next, we're on double Orcus Civil Skeleton. It can bring back an Orcus from the grave when it is in the grave. Uh, all the graveyard effects of the Orcus do dark lock you, so you can't special summon for the rest of the turn except for dark, so you do need to sequence your turn correctly. Next, we are on the one of. We are on one Orcus Hardcore. Uh, came off the list. Woohoo! Um, so, the only reason playing this deck, it makes Cartesia a one card full Orcus combo, so we need to be playing it. Then, lastly, for our actual Orcus names, we are on one Orcus Brass. Bra bombard Ooh, almost just stuttered my words there orcist brass bombard um this is actually a card that can make our combos come true um given that we're playing link rebo and we're playing such a large run of orcists normal summoning brass bombard linking off into a link rebo and then using graveyard effect to bring out an orcist is sometimes our best play and just having access to bat uh, brass bombard to get uh orcus that are stranded in hand out of hand is just really valuable um so we are playing the one of, um, so we're going to test it out. And then next time I do a profile, you'll see if it stays in or not and whether or not I think it's worth it. So this is mostly here for a test. Then lastly, we are on the one world wand. I attempted to actually buff this up. However, um, it is a brick since we can't normal summon it and it's not an orchest in hand. So we can't summon it off of brass. That's it for our orchest monsters. Now for our Orcus Spells and Traps. We are on one Babel, one Crescendo, and one Return. All cards searchable with Galatea. Whether we need one or the other, we are always able to search them. Uh, Crescendo being a counter trap as long as we have an Orcus Link. Babel being the best one, giving all of our Orcus monsters quick effects, which is just incredibly powerful. And then uh, Orcus Return being able to pitch extra Orcus or World Legacies in our hand in order to draw cards. We open, uh, let's say, for example, Babel plus World Wand uh, off of Galatea, more than likely we'll be grabbing our return in order to both draw no more cards and potentially into non-engine, as well as getting our World Wand into the graveyard. That's it for our Orcus. Now onto our Cartesia engine. We are on a triple Blazing Cartesia, able to fuse with any light or dark in order to start our combo, as well as three of the Cartesia Searcher, three Branded and High Spirit, uh, we recently lowered, in this version of the deck, we lowered the amount of uh, non-targets for High Spirits and raised the amount of targets. So Brass Bomb Red's an additional target. We lowered some of the Bestial Counts because those weren't targets. So uh, ideally, High Spirits will be live more often than not. So we are playing this. And these are also an advantage engine because they will be adding themselves back to our hands turns that Fusion Summon Monsters are sent to the grave. Now... For our Bestials, we are on one Bestial Lubelion, one Bestial Magnumut, and one Branded Regain. That's it for our Bestials. That's all we're playing. Um, 
We are side decking the rest of the Abyss deals. Um, the reason we're still playing the Magnum is because we remain decking a hand trap that is a dragon. So uh, it is searchable. You can always search the Bellion off of Magnumut. So we're playing multiple targets so Magnumut isn't completely dead. Magnumut is still also a target for the Lubellion in deck, so we can actually discard it um, to grab a Bistial. So it's just a nice little tight package um, right over here. We don't mind opening any of these individual cards because they all get some sort of advantage somehow. So that's it for our Bistials. Now onto our, um, like, I don't want to say non-engine, but like non-engine monsters. We are on one tier limit Sheeran like we were on before. This can dump cards and potentially uh, mill cards that we really want to be milling. It gets our Orcus out of hand and it's a free body on field. Uh, it also lets us OTK really easily, funny enough, with Cartesia. Because if we use Cartesia and Sheeran to make a uh, Greg Guggenol, we can then use Sheeran effect because it was sent to the graveyard by a card effect. The Fuse using the Cartesia in the grave to make a secondary one. Sure, you're not going to get the effect, but it's another 2500 attack on field. So that's something if you're trying to close out the game. And then here's a new card. We are playing one Jizzy Kiru, the Star Destroying Kaiju. Um, it's not really searchable, but if we do open it, it's not dead if we're going first because of Brandon and High Spirits and Cartesia being able to fuse it off or pitch it in order to search the Cartesia. As well as this just being a very powerful card uh, when we're paired against the fire decks and we're going second. If we open it and they have an Amblo Whale and Promethean Princess, we can just slap this on top of the Amblo Whale and they have no recourse like at all because of that. They can't bring up the Princess, they lose their Amblo Whale, and they get a big ass Jizzy Kami Kaiju. So that's the reasoning for it being in the deck. Probably like. Probably not worth it, but I really wanted to just test it out. You know what I mean? I wanted to add more names that I can pitch to search. And this is probably one of the more useful ones. That's it for our monsters. Now onto our generic spells and traps. We're playing two. We're playing one called by and one foolish burial. I think this is pretty standard, so no need to really talk too in depth about this. Now onto our hand traps. I know I said we were done with monsters, but I don't consider the hand traps monsters really. I know I mentioned dragons. We are on double fantastical dragon phantasme. Uh, everyone's link summoning, even branded. Uh, everyone's making SP a little knight. Uh, everyone has SP a little knight, which is more surprising to me. I'm like, damn, this is like a $200 card and everyone has this? Damn. They're not really 200, but you know what I mean. Uh, so we're playing uh, two phantasme. It can get us advantage and fix our hands. And it is SP a little knight, like prevention, I guess. Because SP a little knight targets and phantasme protects against targeting. So there's that. So we were playing two of that in the main, uh, which is interesting. Just trying to pre-board, I guess, a little bit. Then we were on triple droll. We were able to search Cartesia with this because it is a spellcaster. And we were able to fuse with Cartesia with uh, Phantasmic because it is a dark. Then we are on uh, triple veiler. Uh, we can both fuse and search Cartesia with this because it is a light spellcaster. And then lastly, we can't do anything with these. We have triple, infinite, and permanence. Those are our hand traps. We are on a nice, comfortable 11. Now, onto our non-engine. This is the last part of our main deck. We are on two copies of Forbidden Droplet and three copies of Book of Moon. Um, Droplet is just very good in this deck, being able to pitch our Orcus for any ways. It's most of the time also a combo starter since you're getting all your Orcus in gray that you want as well as interacting with your opponent in a beneficial way. And then Book of Moon is both uh, interruption with your opponent if they're playing a Link strategy and protection for our Cartesia from getting infinite impermanence or effect failure since it'll be face down and you can still fuse with face down monsters. All right, that's it for the main. Now on to the extra. For the extra deck, we are on one Link Karibo to link off our uh, level ones being Brass, Bombard, and the token we make, as well as effect failure in specific situations. We are on one IP Masquerina, as well as the one SP Little Knight to pair with it. Uh, they're canonically gay, so they're kissing in the extra deck. Then for Orcist, we are on two Galatea and a Longirsu. To pair with that IP Masquerina and SP Little Knight, we got a Nightmare Unicorn. And then lastly, we did change out access code in the deck. Uh, I'm changing it out for Borlode Dragon. <laughs> um... It's a little bit of a weird pick, uh, I'll give you all of that. But um, this card can't be targeted by monster effects, uh, as well as stealing monsters 
uh, that it attacks, just this free link material functionally. Um, I think it might actually be pretty alright into this upcoming metagame. I could just be completely incorrect and this is just kind of a throw pick in the extra. Again, make your own decisions, don't just net deck my deck to be honest. Um, there's definitely better decisions to be made and this deck more uh, represents my play style. That's it for our links. Now on to our XEs. We are on Ding 1, Ding 2, and Typhon. Pretty self-explanatory. I like playing 2 Ding because I like uh, playing the mind games with my opponents where they don't know if I'm playing 2 Ding or not. Now for our fusions. We are on 2 Greg Guggenong because we can send Spellcaster to Search Cartesia as well as if we do send a Spellcaster to Search Cartesia. If we get interacted past that, Grand Guggenall will always be interaction in our graveyard, depending on what actions our opponent takes. Uh, works very good against Dia Bellstar, because it does special summon itself from the graveyard. And then we are playing one Sprint as a machine target for our Brandon in High Spirit. Lastly, our extra, we do have one Synchro, being the Despian Lulu will Lilith, making our Greg Guggenall interaction uh, by being able to banish it to special summon it. So that's it for our extra. Now on to our side deck. In our side deck, we are on triple evenly matched. I'm going to glance over this a little bit quicker than I did before, just because this is completely subjective and is completely uh, relevant to your local metagame. We are on a triple anti-spell fragrance for when we know we're going to be going first. We can side out uh, stuff like the Bestial uh, Magna Mutt and the Titanoclad and leave in the branded regained so we can just keep getting that advantage if we do draw it and then we are on double twin twister for backer decks and fire king since we can pop their field spell we are on hand traps we're on double nibiru double dd crow for labyrinth and then all the rest of our bestials one baldrick one sarnir and one druis worm that is it for the main extra and side. We do, of course, have our two World Legacy tokens. You do see that they are level one. But that's going to wrap it up for this deck profile. Thank you guys so much for watching, if you still are. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. Thank you all so much for watching the video. It really means a lot. If you want to talk to other Yu-Gi-Oh players in a competitive manner, please feel free to check out my Discord. We are still growing, but we would love to have you. And we plan to do some events sometime soon. You'll also be able to do cool stuff like vote on future videos and topics of videos, so swing by sometime and check us out. I also started a Patreon, so there'll be a link to the description of my videos from now on. Donating would mean a lot and would help in producing these videos. Right now, there's only one tier being Tier 1 Femboy. This tier includes access to an exclusive Discord channel where you'll be able to talk amongst other Femboys and have access to discussions with me as well, as well as getting a shout out in every video following at your patronage. Thank you so much for all your support.